Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we're gonna to discuss the four most common questions that we get here at Weld.com regarding plasma cutter. So let's go ahead and start off with question number one. What size air compressor do I need to run a plasma cutter? Now here at our shop, we have two 100 gallon tanks daisy chained together, but we're supplying the CNC plasma cutter. We have other air tools, multiple plasma cutters, all kinds of stuff running off the air and the new test bender. Fail! Uh, so a lot of things are running off air around here. So obviously we've overdone it just a little bit. Uh, but the general rule of thumb is you want, you want to go and find out the rating for your plasma cutter. Find out what the requirements are for that machine. So this one, for instance, requires about four CFM. Okay, this is the new Power Plasma 62i from Everlast. This requires four CFM. So you want one and a half times the size of that of constant air pressure from your compressor. So that equals to about six CFM. 90 PSI, and about a 30 gallon tank. So general rule of thumb, if you're just running a small plasma cutter at your shop or your house, you know, I'd start off with at least a 30 gallon air compressor, but air compressors, you always wanna go big or go home. So go a little bit bigger than you think you need to, you should be fine. Question number two, where do I set my amperage at for different material thicknesses? We have to understand that a plasma cutting unit is completely separate than a welding machine. So with a welding machine, we want roughly one amp for every thousands for the most part. But with the plasma cutter, we want to make sure that we're matching our amperage to the consumables that we have in the torch, be it 30, 60, 80, you know, whatever the amperage may be. So for right now, I have 60 amps uh, set on the machine, but I also have 60 amp consumables in here. If I put consumables in here that are rated for lower capacity than what I'm trying to cut, I'm going to destroy the consumables and I'm going to get poor cut quality. So a good rule of thumb is I usually just max it out. I put the highest amount of consumables in here and then I set my amps at 60, and then depending on the material that I'm cutting, I just change my travel speed. So if I'm going from sheet metal to plate to heavy gauge or heavy thick material, I'm just going to, to adjust my travel speed. So to demonstrate this, we're gonna go ahead at 60 amps with 60 amp consumables in the torch, we're gonna go ahead and make a couple of different cuts, one on some eighth inch as the three eighths material here and up to three quarter inch plate, and I'll be able to cut all that with the same consumables at 60 amps by just changing my travel speed. All right, so we're gonna start off with some eighth inch material, 60 amp consumables and 60 amps on the uh, power source. So you notice I traveled pretty quick across there. We got a nice clean cut. Let's go ahead and step it up to some 3 8 material. All right, so 3 8 material, 60 amp consumables, 60 amps on the power source. So if you notice, I moved a little bit slower, but we still have a nice clean quality cut. Very little dross. It can be chipped off very simply. All right, so again, we're gonna step it up. We got some three quarter inch plate here, same consumables, same amperage. Okay, so again, nice clean cut, very limited dross same 60 amps. So just by changing travel speed, we can, you know, that's going to affect cut quality, type of material, thickness, all that good stuff. So you really don't have to change your amperage. You just have to make sure that your consumables match the amperage that you're utilizing. Question number three. Hey, my consumables aren't lasting and I'm getting really poor cut quality. What could be the problem? Well, most likely your standoff distance. So I highly recommend anytime you're cutting with plasma cutting, Get yourself a standoff guide. It just makes life that much easier. If you're too far back or too close, you're gonna, your cut quality is gonna diminish. Okay, you wanna maintain a nice, consistent, tight distance or a standoff distance, and that guide's gonna help. Now, if you're dragging your consumables across the material, it's gonna tear that up, because you have to remember that's electrically conductive. Unless you have a drag tip on there, it's gonna tear that tip up. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do just right. Okay, Goldilocks? We're gonna maintain a proper standoff distance and make a nice clean cut. Okay, so that was a nice clean cut. We're gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna to go too far away and see what type of cut quality we get. Okay, so a couple things to notice here. Here's our good cut, and here's our bad cut. 
Now, one thing you probably noticed is the machine actually cut off while I was while in the process of cutting, and that's because I moved too far away from it. So if you're moving too far away, the machine's gonna cut out, and you're also gonna get poor cut quality. So as you can see, the further I pulled that torch away, the more extreme that curve line got, and it actually created a bevel, so it's more of an angled edge to it. What, what you want is a nice 90 degrees straight up and down. You start getting too far back, and that pilot arc you know, is, is, creates that bulb effect in there, and you get a nice material slant in there that you don't want. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is probably what's most common for people that are just starting out plasma cutting. I know I'm always correcting my students on this. If you drag that on there, a lot of people think that the closer I get, the better my cut quality is gonna be, but that's actually counterintuitive. You're gonna destroy your consumables, and you're gonna get horrible cut quality. All right, so before cutting, you can tell the consumables, you know, they're good. Everything's fine about it. Uh, I'm gonna do a before cut, and then right after we do it, I'm gonna show you the difference in the consumables. All right, so as you can see, my orifice is now elongated, right? Talk about story of your life. You don't want that to happen. Now, every additional cut that I make after that is gonna be poor cut quality. In addition to that, notice that it didn't even cut all the way through the plate. It's hard to keep it straight in line because you have all that friction between the tip and the plate going on, right? So it's hard to get a nice straight line in there. As well, we didn't get a good clean cut. And look at the excessive amount of dross that we have on the back here. Notice that when we held it just right, very little dross. Too far away, draw starts to build up, and too close, excessive amount of draws. All right, so if you're new to plasma cutting or you've been doing it for a while, you're just not proficient at it, I highly recommend getting a standoff guide. They're relatively cheap. This machine actually came with one. A lot of them do nowadays. Um, for the price you're gonna pay for one of these, you're, you're gonna save buckets of money because consumables are gonna be a lot more expensive than the standoff guide. So, you know, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, so. I highly recommend picking one of these up and using that to maintain your distance. If you don't have one, you lost it, it got tore up, um, try to maintain about an eighth inch to a three sixteenths off the material so you still get good clean cut quality until you can get one of these for your torch. All right, so the last one you wanna think about is, um, kinda ties into what we just discussed as far as consumable life, right? We wanna extend the longevity of our consumables. How do I keep my consumables from deteriorating too fast? The best thing you can do for yourself is make sure you have a good quality air dryer that's hooked up to your machine, whether it comes from, um, from the air compressor itself or is attached to the machine. With the new Everlast, it already has the air dryer built into the back of it, so, I mean, problem solved. But if you have air, you're getting moisture in your lines, it's gonna cause a lot of pitting, you're gonna get poor cut quality, and you're also gonna destroy the life of your consumables. So the best thing you can do is provide clean, dry air for your equipment to run off of. For instance, at our shop, we have a air, an air dryer hooked up right at the source, right at where our air compressor is, and then we also have one on the back of every one of our plasma cutters. That's how important dr clean, dry air is gonna be to the life of your consumables and the life of your equipment. Okay, so make sure you have a good quality air dryer. I mean, if you can afford to go out and get one you know, that hooks up you know, before uh, it comes into your plasma system, you know, between the air compressor and the system, I highly recommend that. Double up on it, you can't, your air can't be too dry. You want clean, dry air, otherwise it's gonna destroy the consumables and potentially destroy the equipment. Uh, guys, I hope you found this video educational and informative. Uh, thanks for watching, we definitely appreciate your support. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until next time, make every well better than your last.